And then please tell me kind of what your name is or how you'd like to be addressed. And um, we'll do kind of a sound check at the same time. I'll go first. Um, I'm Navi. Um, Navi? Thanks for having me. Navi, yes. Okay, awesome. Welcome, Navi. Thanks for being here. Thank you. I'm, I'm Laz. Laz? Um, but I can't, yes, and I can't see you. So You still can't see me? Yeah, maybe I'll just rejoin. Yeah, try rejoining, because I, I think I see me. I don't know what to do if you can't see me. Okay. Um, I'm Sinestra, by the way. Hi. Okay. Oh, so, Navi, Laz, and Sinestra? Yeah, hi. Sinestra, you look super nervous. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. Okay, so who's next? Hi, I'm uh, Megan. Oh, Megan. <laughs> nice to meet you, Megan. Cool. Oh, wait. Hi, I'm Sina. It's nice to see you. <laughs> nice to see you too, Sina. Welcome. And I go by Salaya, but you can call me Sal as well, for short. Salaya? Mm hmm. Did I say that right? Yeah, you said that right. Okay. Okay. And then, Laz, can you see us now? Okay, so yes. <laughs> and it was it was Navi, is that right? Yes. So Navi, Laz, Sinestra, Megan, Sina, and Salaya. I got those right. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So um, welcome everyone. And uh, what are we talking about today? You tell us, I guess. <laughs> So my understanding is that you guys were, and so I use guys as a gender plural, I mean, a gender neutral term, which is the way that I was raised and I'm trying to rewire my neurons. So I apologize. I don't mean to offend anyone. Um, so uh, I thought we were going to just share, or I, I was hoping we could hear a little bit about what y'all's experiences are like being women and playing video games and um, hopefully educate us a little bit and like learn a little bit about what y'all's experiences are. Um, and so if somebody wants to start, that's cool. Otherwise I can kick things off with a question. A question would be great, I think. <laughs> yeah. So what's it like to be a woman and play video games? Challenging. What's challenging about it? Uh, getting attention just for being a woman playing games is kind of... Uh, more than we ask for sometimes uh -huh. when we just want to play games. Okay. Um, and is that something that re resonates with other people? Yeah, yeah, I would say like it's kind of mixed because like sometimes you'll get people who like treat you normally and it's like great. And then like sometimes you get people who like treat you like absolute shit. And then like sometimes you get people who are just like super weird to you. So what what does that mean? Super weird. Um, like they like have certain expectations for you or like they have like this like narrative in their mind that they just play out whenever they interact with a woman online. Like it's like, yeah. oh, there's a woman, let's say like go back to the kitchen or something like it's like execute like, like a, like a line of code. Program. Yeah. Broadly said we're NPCs sometimes. <laughs> oh, that's a fascinating way to put it. What do you mean by that, Salai? Well, kind of like, um. Uh... Sorry, I forgot the name you go by. <laughs> you can call me Megan or Muse. Either either yeah. fine. Oh, okay. Well, it's going to say Muse. Um, sad is like, they just play a certain um, thing that they, that they have, joke, the same jokes come up, or uh, interaction that they think is appropriate or um, is what we want to hear when, when they see a woman in playing the games. <laughs> and, and what so, are the... Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Well, it can be from like the stupid jokes to whatever uh, questions or uh, following you with, within the game or um, just all kinds of things just for their entertainment instead of treating you as a team player or um, yeah, you're just pretty much an NPC. And, and if you don't respond the way that they, that they want you to respond, then they become even more toxic. Okay, so I heard a couple of terms there. One was toxic, and you said if they, if they don't if you don't respond the way they want you to respond, 
What, yes. How do they want you to respond? What are they looking That's for? That's a guessing game. Do you, do you agree with them? <laughs> do you just like get along with them and just hope that like, oh my gosh, like the, like she's, she's finally responding to me. Like, oh my gosh, like finally I can, you know, get what I want, which is, you know, because I don't know, it's just like, I guess some people have like this like mindset in their head that like, if I don't play a nice guy because a nice guy finishes last, if I be like an asshole, definitely she'll get my attention, you know? So, okay, I'm growing more and more confused, but let me just start with this, okay? So the first thing is, so I asked, so I was like, you know, they want you to say the right thing, otherwise things escalate, right? That's what I kind of heard her say. Does that make sense to y'all? Or would y'all kind of agree with that? Yeah. Yeah. And then my next question is like, okay, what's the right thing? And she's like, I don't know. That sounds like a busted game that you can't win. Yeah. Like there's like only one perfect answer. And like, if you don't get it, then you're just like in a world of shit now. <laughs> so what's the, per I I'm curious, what is the perfect answer? Is there isn't, there isn't actually a perfect answer. No. So, so. Yeah. Maybe just a laugh or just a. Give him attention, but you, you never really know how. The winning move is not to play. Or not to speak so that they don't know you're a woman. <laughs> and how does it feel to not play or not speak? Sucks. What sucks Actually, about it? Well, you're there to have fun and play the game that you want to play in, in the way you want to play. And then... To be met with a thought of like, well, if I speak up now, there's a 50-50, if not higher percentage that I can't play the game that I want to play. Because... And the game that you want to play is just the game that everyone else gets to play. Yeah, pretty much. I think, too, it's like really frustrating, like when you get treated unfairly and you know you're being treated unfairly. To just sit there and like um have to deal with it too because like a lot of times too like you'll get stuck in a game and it's like you can't leave it right if it's competitive or whatever and mm -hmm. then you have to like deal with these people for like at least 20 minutes Who and like the... yeah go ahead sorry <laughs> oh and then it's like you're basically rolling the dice every time you queue into a game so it's like an overwatch it's like i have a one in five chance of getting like x number of assholes like because it kind of depends like sometimes you'll get one sometimes you'll get none and then the really fun times, you get five of them. So I apologize for interrupting. You guys are just saying, once again, guys, sorry. Um, Y'all are just saying things that are really like fascinating to me in terms of some of the assumptions. I can hear assumptions baked into everything that y'all are saying, right? And, and so my curious, like my next question is like, what does an asshole look like? Like, what does that mean? Like, how do you know when someone is an asshole to you in a game? Like, what do they say or what do they do? How crass like, can I get on the stream? Um, just nothing that's going to get us banned. And the reason that I want to ask the question is because I sometimes wonder if there are people out there who don't think that they're an asshole. And so I'm curious about, so like when you, when y'all say that sometimes I get five assholes, everyone in Twitch chat is like, <laughs> those guys suck, but it's not me, right? That's naturally what happens when we leave things ambiguous. And what I'm really curious about is like, maybe I'm an asshole, like in a video game. I don't know. So I'd really like to hear from y'all about what they will actually like say or do. Um, and, and so we can like really know what is an asshole, what's not an asshole, what's acceptable, what's not acceptable. I think a big question nowadays is like, what's okay and what's not okay, right? Where do we draw the line? And so I'd love to hear from y'all. So go for it, Mavi. I think just uh, avoid, you know, TOS banning things like Actually I don't know what's TOS, that. so I'll just blankety blank. Okay, uh, great. <laughs> hey, you blankety blank. Uh, you sound real cute. I'd love to shove my blank down your blank. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And how or often? Sometimes... Oh, yes, yeah. and... oh, sorry, sorry. No. I think one of the things that also I guess, like, why don't you give me like a like a kiss? Why don't you give me like attention or stuff like that? Or like, like if. I'm going to do this for you. I'm going to help you or be actually a team player if, you know, you give me your phone number or if you give me a kiss and everything. Can you kiss someone over Overwatch? <laughs> they want you to make like it in the like the noise or like 
or like they'll be like say uwu or what like, whatever your best uwu or wow and what's yeah. i mean we're all smiling but what's that what are we actually talking about what, why are we smiling right now what's up with that it's amusing because it it sounds really funny in, in hindsight but it's like it's just gross and it's hard like it's hard to know how to react to that like yeah yeah it when it's being said to you you're disgusted thinking about it in hindsight it's all really like stupid it's really yeah. ridiculous do you think that that has something to do with like the fact that we're all smiling and laughing right now do you think that that has any i'm trying to figure out does that have some bearing on why it continues uh, no for me it's like a coping mechanism okay to laugh it off yeah, yeah. and for right now like when it's happening in the moment most of us are not laughing yeah so. how do you feel when it happens in the moment um disappointed usually because it's always the same stuff it's and and you can only you only have like a certain ways you can react to it either ignore it either play along and you know try to convert the conversation or uh poke back at them with with stupid stuff you know the 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 one I normally is, use is, uh, can you not come up with something original for once? Like, make a fun joke. Um, and you, sometimes that turns it completely around. And then like, oh, okay. And, and because, I mean, you know, the joke of get into the kitchen and make me a sandwich, it's so overplayed and it doesn't technically make you an asshole. It's just stupid to hear every single time. <laughs> it's tiring. It, um, it doesn't make you an asshole? Uh, I mean, it does, but online toxicity is, is just a is just a thing that we somehow all want to accept that, that to be a norm. But I don't know. So what I'm hearing from Salai, and, and let me know if you guys, uh, you know, heard the same thing, is that basically y'all don't even consider that an a that being an asshole anymore because the spectrum of assholery is so big. That that's actually like that doesn't even count anymore because there's all this stuff happening over here. There's yeah. worse for sure. Yeah, I think what? too. Like at a certain point, it just becomes easier to let things go than to like address it all the time, right? Because like I I've done where I like try and like be like I don't like this statement or like I don't like this, and then you just become the person who's always saying like no 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 no, and it's like no one like wants to be around that person who's just like the party pooper. Like it's like. Hmm. Yeah, you can't take a joke. That's what it ends up as. I think yeah. also one of the things that's also super exhausting, sometimes we want to respond, but it's just like, also there is like external factors. Like sometimes I, I deal with harassment in real life as well. And also facing it online, it's just like, where, where do I go? If I face this online and I face this like IRL, like, where where do I exactly feel safe, you know? Man, that sucks. Like, I was just thinking that, you know, part of what I love about games is that, like, it's the place that I go when I don't want to be in IRL. Right? That's, that's what it is for me. It's like, I'm tired of dealing with COVID. Let me play some video games. And what I'm hearing from y'all is that the place that I get to go, y'all don't even get to go and enjoy if it's yeah. single player, then... Yeah, I'm yep. definitely tired of being made to feel like I don't, like, belong in these spaces when, like, I clearly do. It's, like, the, the price of a mission is, like, the cost of the game, and, like, that should be it. Damn. Powerful words. And what is the price of a mission for you, Megan? Uh, it's mainly taking a roll of the dice. Like, um, for example, like, um... I have games that I have bought, but I don't play because my friends have told me that I shouldn't because people will be so rude to me there. So um, the specific one I'm thinking of is Rainbow Six Siege, where it's like, I, like I've seen gameplay and it looks so fun and I just want to play it, hmm. but I just don't want to deal with it. And I actually played my first game, like a f one game of it, and they didn't even know I was a girl. And like, that like wasn't a factor in this, but... I got to sit and listen to this guy tell this story about coming into a pair of Gucci socks. 
in my first game of it. And I was like, I don't really want to take the chance. And also, like, I hear stories like where it's like a common thing in that game for guys to ask girl for their pee. And it's like, do I really want to put up with that just to play this game? And I'm like, I don't think so. Now I find myself being morbidly and horrifically curious when you said guys to ask a girl for their pee. Is that a slang term like shortage of penis or is that urine? Like their urine. Urine. What the actual fuck? Welcome. What? Yeah, welcome. What is that even? <laughs> okay, so let me explain something to y'all. So I'm a psychiatrist. Sometimes people come into my office and they tell me about the sexually depraved shit that they're into. And never have I heard anything, like, just bizarre. Like, why would you want a woman's urine off of the internet? Like, what are you going to do with that? There was some meme about it making you a better gamer, so then they How, would uh, ask random women. Where the fuck does that even come from? Why is that even... What? Memes have some grounding in reality, right? They're like something that happens in the real world and they get gets like taken out of proportion. I think it had to do with the Belle Delphine selling her bath water. I think it came from that or something like that, and then people just escalated that. it. What what it's is that? Def- it's definitely that. Ever since um Belle Delphine came on the internet and she started selling, you know, bath water that she used, you know, to shower herself, so many guys were uh, simping for it, I guess. <laughs> Just okay, to be so, clear, she marketed it as gamer girl bathwater. Okay, so I don't know if this is beyond the scope of the conversation, but can y'all please enlighten me as to what the words that are coming out of y'all's mouth means? So first Which of one? all, who or what is a Belle Delphine? That's a person? Right? Yeah, she's an individual, is she, yeah. Is she like a streamer? or She's like a streamer. A, okay. And so she started selling her bath water, meaning the the liquid that she pours, a, that she takes a bath in. Yes. And My she understanding, started, she's like a meme troll, so like... Okay. So like she was trolling and she started selling bath water and people purchased it? Or was that a her, joke? Her viewers actually purchased it. People mostly bought it, but as a joke. Like, a lot of YouTubers bought it as a joke, and they're like, I bought it, and then they I showed see. it. Got it. Okay. Because then my next and question is like... Uh, sorry, Laz? No, no, no. And some drank it. They, they drank it. Can I just think for a second? Take, take your time. Can I tell you all the story? So I was around, so I'm a boomer, right? And now we're going to tell a Dr. K boomer story. So, like, I was around when the internet was born. And I know that's kind of a weird thing to say, but, like, the internet wasn't always around. Like, at the beginning, the internet was, like, a place, even before the days of the internet, we had these things called bulletin board systems, BBSs, that are really cool. It's like you log into the server and only one person can be on the server at a time and you like play games and stuff like that. There were like turn-based games and and like, you know, sometimes people would like chat and have discussions. There'd be like forums where you could post and stuff like that. And it just blows my mind that this is what the internet has turned into. I don't even know what this is. And also, what's a simp? I hear people use that term a lot. I, I could take a stab at the definition. Uh... I think it's uh, typically a guy viewer of a female streamer or YouTuber who is the kind of person that would like donate to them just to hear their name be read from the donation. And that's like all that they want to get from that relationship. Like they're happy just to have their name be read from, from a donation marker and, and they'll give money to that person to have them read it. Okay, so now help me understand something. And I recognize that you guys may not have answers here, but maybe y'all do. So like, when we think about a toxic asshole that you guys play games with, and then there's a simp, are those like opposite ends of a spectrum or the same spectrum? Like, is that the same person? Or like, what is the relationship there? And maybe there is not. Usually, Usually it's seen as the opposite of it. Like if you defend a woman against a bully, then you're a simp. 
Okay. Okay. I wonder if they're the same person. Interesting. Anyway, that's just doc, Dr. K is going to have to think about that for a little while with his Freudian head. Um, I, yeah. Um, from my understanding for like a simp, the simp is like a person who's just like, you know, those type of guys who's willing to give 110% or like 140% of their attention and their affection and just be super submissive to whatever needs of the person, like the girl that they're going after. It's like, just so that they can be in a romantic or sexual relationship with them. That's it. Have you guys encountered your own simps? Like, have people tried to do that to you? I see Laz nodding emphatically. Mm -hmm. Care to share, Laz? Um, it's sometimes it's like the guy that um, is offensive towards you in the game. And then you have a good comeback or you just like stop him from like that behavior or that you say something that he knows that he can't uh, fuck with you. Like he can't mess with your head. So then he slides into your DMs and he's like, I'm sorry, I'm not actually like that. And then like, and then he's like, he, he be, he's nice and like, he's okay. And then like two days later, he's being weird to you yes. again. So you guys, y'all have once again hit that part where I was following what you're saying and then you use some words and it seems like your colleagues understand exactly what you're talking about. But can y'all educate the rest of us? Like, what does that mean? Then he starts being weird. Are we talking about blankety blanks and blankety blanks? Are we talking about bathing or drinking your urine? Are we talking, like, what are we talking mm -hmm. about here? What is um, that generally appropriateness, I guess. Like what? Sorry. What does that What does that look like? I would say, um, well, the stuff that we've mentioned is for one, but also, um, they want to get something out of you usually. So, uh, and this could span from indeed like two days, a week, a month, five months, a whole year. It, you never really know. <laughs> um, and it's just interactions where they um they do stuff for you and they want something back and then they suggest something inappropriate, and that could be straight up asking for nudes that could be more subtle uh stuff at first but yeah usually it, it involves something romantic or sexually hmm. you know that's bizarre Salai, because I, I remember you're the one who said that they treat you like an npc right yeah. it sounds to me like they're grinding reputation with you <laughs> yeah to get like <laughs> reputation <laughs> rewards they're like grinding like for eight months i'm gonna i'm gonna message this chick every day and then once yeah. I hit, you know, Grand Marshal in the Celia faction, I'm going to get me a nude. Yeah, and it's not even it just being inappropriate and rude, but it's also just uh, a mistrust because you don't really know going into certain friendship relationships, whether or not there's actually friendship relationships or not. So there's always a balance of um, do I really trust someone or do I not or yeah. It, you have to always be on your guard. It sounds like you can't, like, just like playing the game, you just can't interact with another person without having to think about all this extra stuff. It sounds exhausting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Sina? Um, also, one of the things that's frustrating is that when you actually do have the guts to actually stand up for yourself and say like, no, no man, I'm not interested in that type of stuff. No, thank you. And you, you try to stand your ground. What winds up happening is that nice guy routine just kind of snaps and he's like, oh my God, she's being such a female dog. And afterwards you're, you're just like, you can't win at all. And because of that, it just spreads sometimes to your own friends. Sometimes it spreads to you like the people closest to you. And you don't even know that hap that's happening in, in the back. It, you're just thinking like, oh, maybe he respects like what's going on between us. Maybe he says he understands that I'm saying no and he's okay with it. But then there's some people who's just like backstabs you and just says a lot of stuff behind your back, you know? Well, that sounds like something pretty bad happened to you, Sina. 
that didn't sound general at all. That sounded really specific. Do you want to share that? Or, I mean, you don't have to. It's just, I'm curious. I, I guess it's just like when, when I do step up for my own self, when I finally snap and I'm already pushed to the, to the edge already. And I can't take it. I can't take it. It's already hurting me emotionally and mentally. And I'm, and I already got stuff to deal with in real life. Hmm. And this person is just like overstepping like, oh, because, you know, you can't say no to me. I'm your friend. You're supposed to be there for me. I'm supposed, you're supposed to be always there for me. I thought you're, you're never going to abandon me. And then because of that, it's just like, it, it gets you, it eats you up it makes you feel horrible and and afterwards you just kind of sit with that guilt you know i don't know it's just it's it sounds, yeah it sounds like they need you for certain things like it sounds very very dependent does that make sense like they're relying on you for a lot of i'm, I'm still not quite sure what I don't know if it's like emotional support or, or what, but like, it sounds like they really do lean on you very, very heavily. And you don't feel like you can say no without being a guilty female dog. Yeah. And, and then when I actually try, try to stand up for myself, I just start feeling, okay, I, I shouldn't have done that. I start feeling horrible for opening up about how I really feel. And I, and because of that, it caused like a lot of drama, a lot of stress, and other people are being affected. And I, and some parts of me is just like, I, I should have shut up. I should have never said anything. Like now, a lot of people are being affected by this, you know. So, Cinda, you keep on mentioning like people's talking behind your back, and it affects other people in your friend circle, and there's drama with other people. Is that something that other people have experienced? Does it kind of spill um over? Sinestra? I've experienced that. Yeah, yeah. Can you tell us about that? Um, it's like sometimes if you go in a group of people and you say hi, or at least like I tend to talk to like in World of Warcraft, like there's a lot of people you could go talk to. Sometimes if you piss off the wrong person, um, they'll like warn people who join the guild like, oh, they're an attention whore. They talk to everybody. Um, they're going to use you, you know what I mean? And then you go in and you talk like it didn't happen, but like then everybody starts to like act different towards you because they've kind of tarnished or reputation. That's at least the experience I had. <laughs> Sorry. So can you tell us a little bit more about like what you did to earn the ire label of attention whore? I, you, I talk. Like if you talk as a girl, like you're an attention whore. Like if you talk in game, like, oh, you're only doing it for attention. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't matter, like, what you're saying. Hmm. Yeah. Anyone else getting a feeling of, like, what the fuck? Like, that's... Uh, the I relate to that. <laughs> I'm so confused. I'm... More than... It. I was hoping that I would understand more things after this conversation. <laughs> and, and one thing that also kind of sucks is that, like, it's just... It happens in real life and also online. What happens? Like, even the thing that I mentioned about like this happening online, I I've experienced something like this, like in real life as well. And it's just like I sometimes feel like I I don't know where exactly to go to. I don't know where I'd feel safe, honestly. How do people feel about that? Yeah, I've been sexually harassed in person. It's more frequent online. There are more uh, anonymous interactions where people feel safer sexually harassing women. So it's more frequent for sure. I'm trying to just process if anybody else has things. I, I know that we had, I had asked Laz actually a couple of questions and, and she was kind of saying that they slide into your DMs. And also that means that they just message you. Is that what that sliding into your DMs means? Okay. Yeah. 
there's no like sliding is just like messaging it's not like a special kind of messaging no i find like they'll try and find any excuse too. like for example when i was in this discord and this guy started messaging with me with questions like about the discord but really like they were sort of questions that like, you would ask a moderator and it's like i'm not a moderator of this discord so i don't and he was like well i talked to you like one time in that voice call i'm like okay like we talked one time and mm -hmm. now you're asking me like and two it's like i'm pretty sure you had talked to like other people in the discord multiple times before so it's like why are you asking me sure so is that so sliding sounds like they use some pretense to engage you in conversation with an ulterior motive yeah and then they start grinding the reputation and yeah and two i'm usually pretty clear about that too and like i've had cases where it's like so for my case specifically like i'm asexual and i'm like very open where i'm like i have no interest in, in the, like a relationship so I, i'll tell people that and then i've had guys actually come back and be like oh well like i thought we were actually flirting and it's like how like I was as clear as day to you that like this was never going to be a thing. And they're like, well, one day you sent a heart emoji in a message. And it's like, like, I, I don't, I don't like know what to do with that. Like I literally stopped using emojis after that shit because I'm like, this is fucking dumb. And I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm not having this happen again where someone tries to use that as like a bullshit excuse about why they thought like I might like them. You okay? <laughs> Not really. I'm just like oh, this... I, I I've tried to like moderate my behavior and like I've definitely no, changed my up. personality to that's like all fucked up. avoid this shit. And I know it's fucked up, yeah. but like part of it works is the problem. Yeah, I, I agree with you. So like here's the thing, right? So like the whole like a big premise of most of the stuff that we do here is that people do fucked up shit because it works. Like our last stream was with Austin. And he was like, yeah, I'm anxious and it's irrational. I'm like, no, man, it's rational. It works. That's why we do things. So I'm just, I really just am, there's so much here that, can I just think for a second and then I'm going to start talking and then I don't know what's going to happen after that. Okay. Yeah. I'm sure I have more questions for you. I just can't. Okay, so here's the first problem. Okay, so usually people come on this stream and then my general premise is that like you can change the way that you understand yourself or interact with the world and then that interaction can become a better place and you can feel like a better person. Does that make sense? And generally people like when I work as a medical professional, people come into my office and then I work with them, right? Like, it's kind of like a duh, but like I work with the people that I'm talking to. And then if I work with the people that I'm talking to, then they start to like feel better about themselves, maybe change the way they interact with other people, maybe improve their relationships, maybe get a promotion, maybe switch jobs, whatever, maybe find love. The first thing that I'm really struggling with is that I'm not sure exactly what I need to do with y'all. Like, I don't see this as your problem, which I know sounds kind of like really, really like dumb and obvious, but at the same time, it's actually quite different from most of the stuff that I do, right? Even when I talk to women who have been like wronged in some way, like last Wednesday, we had a woman who talked some about some of her experiences with, with a man. And still, like, I know how to help that person, right? There's a lot of stuff about like shame and, and sort of understanding yourself and why you're conflicted and why you're torn up. And like, you don't know how to act. And I'm not talking about what I'm saying is that even in that situation where there's like sort of like a good guy and a bad guy, I can still work with the good guy to try to help them be like a little bit calmer and understand themselves a little bit better with me. Yeah. I don't know how to do that with y'all because I'm really not sure exactly what here is your piece. And this is the best that I can come up. So the first thing is that like, what's really confusing me is that most of the questions that I want to ask, I, like most of the questions that pop into my mind or not most, but some don't have to do with you. They have to do with the person on the other side of the table, right? Like I want to ask the dude, like why, like when you message a girl, like what's in your head in terms of like 
what are you expecting out of this interaction? Like, is this like, are you like, I want to understand, because we have this really interesting analogy, right? Of like grinding reputation with an NPC faction. And is that what's in their head? Because I'm really curious about that. Like, I'm really curious, like, what do they think? Because here, I mean, we're listening to Megan and Megan is like, I send a heart emoji and now I'm stopping to use emojis. And like, what? That's no way to live life. Like, what is life without emojis? <laughs> you know, it's like. And so th then we get to you know, what's on you and, and that I'm not trying to blame you guys, but I'm sort of saying like, what, what do y'all do psychologically? Right. And, and what I hear is this like whole thing of moderating behavior. I don't know if you guys heard Sina say like, you know, I deal with this shit for a while and then I'm at my limit and I can't take it anymore. That's like a thread that I'm hearing from y'all that you guys tolerate. Sorry, y'all, you guys, you women. That sounds so, doesn't that sound derogatory when I say you women? <laughs> Uh, I'm fine with you guys. Like I use okay. you guys yeah, too. Um, I, don't, I don't see it as like a man thing. The, the, honestly, it's weird though because any opposite of like you gals, like doesn't that sound condescending? Like that feels condescending to me. I don't know. Anyway, I'm confused. But let's stick with y'all. So I'm going to lean on my Texas roots. So the, the interesting thing is it sounds like y'all end up putting up with a lot of stuff that maybe you shouldn't. And then I, I kind of get the sense that y'all are fucked no matter where you go. So like, here's the decision tree, right? Like, queue up for a game. And then do you speak or do you not speak? If you speak, you're fucked. So then you moderate your behavior and then you stop speaking. And then it's like, how on earth are you supposed to play a game of Overwatch without communicating with your teammates? I would make one note, yeah. though, that I find like, um, it kind of depends on the game and also the region that you're in. Because, like, for the most part, like, I play uh, in North America. And for the most part, like, Overwatch is, like, pretty good. It's, like, not, like, the worst. Like, so I think it really depends on the game you're playing, too. Sure. So it's, like, the idea, like, the, the, this behavior is just a given is, like, just complete bullshit. Because it's not, it's not like, even across all games. Like, some games are worse. So that's really that's interesting. Fair. Because that implies that there are individual cultural communities that treat women differently, which I'm really curious about. And, and like you said, Megan, what that means is that there may be a possibility for us to look at one game as opposed to another game, figure out how those two are differ different, and then try to implement a change, a cultural change from one gaming community to another. That's a really interesting point. Can I go back to ranting? Yes, yeah, sorry. No, no, no. I'm, I, I, that actually is maybe the most useful thing to come out of this. But so just back to my rant, because I enjoy doing that from time to time. So, like, here's the decision tree that I see in y'all's head. To play the game or to not play the game, all right? So you decide to play the game, okay? And then you're like, okay, like, as, I can play the game as long as I don't use emojis. Fine. And then, you know, to speak or not to speak. And even if you speak, then, like, even if you open your mouth, like, you're, you're like, engaging in, in jousting with, you know, the nameless people that you're in a game with. Like, that's what it feels like to me. It's like you're saddling up and you get your lance and it's like, hello. And then y'all are in this competition, right? Because the second you open your mouth, there are people charging at you with lances. And anything from putting their blankety planks into your whatever, asking for your urine, or what was the other one? Oh yeah, making you a sandwich. Or make me a sandwich, right? It's like those are the three different like kinds of people that y'all deal with. Or being called an attention whore. So those are that. And so then like, then the question becomes like, how do you even engage with this? It's like, it's not a battle that you can win. And so then the question is, first of all, do you engage or do you not engage? And then maybe what I'm hearing is that sometimes y'all can actually thread the needle and find some perfect response that kind of gets people to back off and maybe actually like let you play the game. But that's just so unfair. Like when I play a game, I don't, you know, I, it's just different. Like I don't, I, don't, I mean, I just don't have to do that shit. And it sounds awful. It's like I just play the game and then, you know, I yell at people because they suck. And then they yell at me because I suck. And then we tell each other we have small penises and then that's the end of it, right? It's like maybe there's something cultural and toxic there. I'm sure there is. That's probably part of the problem. I don't actually do that, by the way. But I'm saying that, like, you know, male-male interactions seem to have a little bit, like, not, I mean, my sense, having participated in the gaming community as a dude and watched other toxicity between men, is that we tend to, like, not make it, we tend to not treat each other like NPCs. 
Like, you'll still get flamers and ragers and stuff like that, but it's not like they're raging at you because of what your gender is. It's just they're raging, raging at you because you, like, made a mistake in the game, or even they made a mistake in the game, and they're finding some way to blame you. That's, like, standard fair gamer toxicity. That sounds different from what y'all deal with. Sounds like you haven't even played the game. Like, they have nothing to rage at you about. You say hello, and then it's like, here we go. And so then, I, and so then y'all start to stay silent, or you try to thread the needle a particular way, or you try to, like, joke back. And, like, that sounds exhausting. And then somewhere along the way, you know, and then even if you engage with them and they, like, treat you well in the game, then they slide into your DMs and you're kind of dealing with them afterward. And then they, you know, you tell them, hey, I'm asexual. And then you send them a heart emoji and they're like, you hurt my feelings. I love you. Send me your urine-soaked bath water. Right? And it's like... <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm even... So here's my next question. And then sometimes what happens is you try to... You have all these feelings, right? So if I'm, I'm listening to Sinna, what I'm hearing is that y'all have feelings that kind of pile up. And then eventually you reach a breaking point. And then you say, no, I'm not into you or whatever, I, I don't know, you respond to them in some way, right? Either you set a limit, you draw a line in the sand, or you tell them that their behavior isn't okay, or you don't, or or the worst crime of all, what's the worst crime that you can commit is not being in love with someone, right? And then if you commit that crime, then they call you an attention whore, they talk shit about you, whatever. So this is the picture that I'm getting. Now, I want to just stop for a second and, and consider for a moment that the picture that I'm painting has you guys doing nothing wrong, right? So that's the picture that I'm seeing from you, but I think probably somewhere in there, there's something that can be changed here. I don't know what that is, but it seems to me to be like sort of a reasonable picture. Like, what do y'all think? So first of all, anyone want to say anything or respond? Yeah, I'd like to say something. Yeah, go for it. Sarah. Um, I think the most hurtful part of it all is being dismissed about how you feel. And when you do, like, the the bubble does burst, uh, it's being always dismissed as, like, oh, you can't take a joke or um, stuff like that. But that's why I would like to say that this stuff doesn't just happen every like so months it ha can happen to you every day and it can happen to you as soon as you're on the internet meaning they don't care if you're 12 or 13 or 14 or 15 so you hear it every single day that you don't belong and that you should do what they tell you and um i think that's the most hurtful part about it because then we do alter our behaviors because it hasn't changed for the over 15 years that I've been playing online games. What's hurtful so. about that? Yeah, Sina, go ahead. Sorry. I think also one of the things that's also terrible, because I, I noticed this happen for like a lot of women and it's really disgusting. I really, I'm, it's just, I, I can't believe that some people go through limits of like doxing us just because they say no or threatening us or trying to say like oh we're gonna stalk you we're gonna get you to like I, I think that's one of the worst the absolute worst when they threaten to kill or hurt you and your loved ones because you reject them or you just say no and you're standing up for yourself that shit sounds crazy People threaten to kill you and your loved ones because you said no to them? It's more likely than you think. Yeah. How yeah. likely is and it? And you don't... <sighs> Depends on maybe the community of the guy, but... Yeah. It's happened to me quite a few times. Like, quite a few is like five <laughs> like more than 10 oh wow and and how do y'all feel when they say that to you i can't do anything yeah th the best i can do is walk away do you i think 
I think it depends, like, um, because I've had a case where it's, like, I did have this person added on Facebook, so, like, they actually knew where I lived, so, like, that, that, like, makes it more, like, actionable seeming, but, like, since then, it's, like, I don't give, like, that sort of personal information about. Hmm. I mean, I, I, it, it, so much of this conversation blows my mind, but I I guess what I'm kind of curious about is, like, do y'all feel like you're actually in danger? Um, I've been, uh, not all the time, but I have been uh, physically stalked and harassed through um, someone who knew me from the gaming community online. So sometimes, yeah. Can we just appreciate how fucked up Navi's statement is? Does anyone get a sense of what I think is just incredibly fucked up about it? Any idea? It is fucked up. The problem is, it's just like, it's normal for us. So I don't know if y'all, yeah, so I don't know if y'all caught that, but she said, not all the time, but dot, dot, dot. And it's like, what on earth? It's subtle, right? And you're like, not all the time. But sometimes people do actually physically stop stop me from the internet. It's like, what? The standard is just so far from the norm. But I think um, the thing with that, when you say norm, it's like, like this is our normal. Like that, that's that's exactly what I'm like, saying. Your normal is completely yeah, different, and like I can't understand your normal because I don't I don't get to live like that online. Yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. That's why I'm having trouble like figuring out what on earth to say or think or ask. Yeah, last. Um, Y'all can just talk. Just, yeah, go. I just wanted to say that. Um, I, I thought about this a little bit and it was like I started being online when I was like 12 or 13 um, and I guess I stumbled upon um, the rules of the internet if you're familiar mm-hmm. and uh, you know the rules say there's no girls on the internet and tits are, or get the fuck out mm-hmm. and I think you know as a first impression of like the kind of space that I'm going to engage in if that's what the rules of the internet say, you know, I gotta be prepared for all the hate I'm gonna get. Like, I think that's why this is the norm. Mm. Like, or at least that was like what, um, let's say 10 years ago, a bit, or maybe 15. And what what's the... I would also like to add, You don't have to even say no to anyone to get this harassment. Like there's. What do you What do you have to do to get this harassment? Just speak. Yeah, that's why I say it. It it starts when you're very young, um, unfortunately, and you don't need a question or uh, an answer to a question to even get it. There are plenty of apps where. You just talk or ask a question and you immediately get told how they would like to do you. And they don't care if you're 13 or not. That's that's just how it is. And you don't know how to deal with that when you're young. And, um, you know, some girls then engage or some don't. Luckily, there's a block button. <laughs> I would highly recommend every girl to use the block button. <laughs> um, but yeah, that is just... That could be a daily message to to Israel. Salai, you know, what blows my mind about that is you say, I don't know how to, you know, when you're 13, you don't know how to deal with that. I'm a grown ass 37 year old man with a family, kids and a job. And if someone I talked to randomly on the internet said that they want to fuck me in a particular way, I wouldn't know how to deal with it. Yeah. And that's why I said, like, the dismissive part hurts the most because... You're being held accountable for for actions like, oh, why didn't you speak up sooner? Or why didn't you do this? Well, because you were 13 years old and you had no clue how to handle it. What does that that mean, the the dismissive part? And who's asking that question? Well, when you do tell these stories or you do, like, have a conversation about it, there, luckily, there are enough men that are very supportive and understanding and want to listen. But there's always people that are very dismissive or 
um, you know, why can you not take the normal make a sandwich joke? Well, because one, we've heard it for a thousand times, but also because we know what comes next and we don't want to deal with it right now. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So it sounds like people blame you for your reaction. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You're not allowed to feel how you feel about stuff. You're like, you have to feel like a certain way. And if you don't feel that way, then you're just overreacting. Or like yeah. too emotional. So it sounds like they gatekeep what you're allowed to do and think and feel. I mean, that's what I'm hearing, right? So that you'll have to yeah. respond in a particular way. And I'm not really hearing like a light at the end of the tunnel either, or seeing. And and because I, I kind of get the sense that like, you know, you're kind of fucked at every step of the, the the equation. Like first interaction to speak or not to speak, to engage or not engage to follow up in the DMs or not the DMs, to tolerate some kind of behavior. I'm also getting some degree of emotional dependency. And and the, the, I don't know if this makes sense, but what I'm feeling on the other end of the interaction is hunger. Like I get the sense that there are like a lot of hungry people out there. Does that feel right yeah. to y'all? Like, it's just yeah. like they're hungry for something. Like, what are they hungry for? Like, they're looking to you to, like, satisfy something. And if you say, quick I don't fix. want, I don't want, uh, what, Salaya? It's just a quick fix for whatever they're hungry for. Yeah, so that's the thing, right? Is I don't think it's actually a quick fix, because what I'm hearing from y'all is that despite what you do, they're still hungry for more. And then you feed them and you feed them and you feed them, and then eventually you can't feed them anymore. And then they get upset at you because you sent a heart emoji or whatever. So what do you think it is that they're hungry for? Like, what do they want from you? Any idea? Well, at least in one case, like, I think I had this issue with this one guy where he thought, like, oh, if I just dated him, like, his life would be perfect and, like, his problems would all magically be solved. And I'm like, that's bullshit. Like, that's not how that works. That's not going to fix your problems. But in his head, like, that's, like, how he thought that would work out. And so, like, that's why, like, he was so insistent on it. Interesting. Is that, do other people relate to that? Yeah, I think it's, like, the whole Manic Pixie dream mindset a lot of movies have implied on. What does that mean? The, what is a Manic Pixie? So, like, a Manic Pixie dream girl is, it's it's common in a lot of tropes for films. And basically, one of the things is that a guy has like a boring life, nothing interesting is happening, no value, he has no sense of direction. A girl comes in, his life is a million times better. He he finally finds his confidence, he's finally living a life that he he wants and everything. Ever since that girl came into the picture and, you know, everything is just a million times better. And I think that's also one of the things that a lot of films try to imply is that if you find like the love of your life you're f you're fully complete on everything hmm. what do you all think about that i think they're all trying to shoot their shot sometimes <laughs> you miss 100 percent of the you miss 100 percent of the shots you don't take is kind of the uh the typical guy thing i hear in that regard hmm. they'll keep asking out and asking out and getting rejections and doesn't matter how bad they are at it. Like they might not learn from how bad they are at it. They'll just keep trying. Um, I I agree with both uh, Navi and Sina, and at least in my experience, um, because I have like engaged with these people in the past, and I try to help them through. Like, you know, they say they like me, but it's like you just met me, dude, or like we just played a game together. Like, what are you talking about? And, you know, I would like talk through, like talk with them. And at least what I see is that there's a severe need for like guys to talk about their feelings. That's, I mean, again, that's my experience, but it's just, you know, they could talk for hours about what they're going through, how they feel and stuff like that. And maybe they want to talk to a girl because 
I don't know why. Or, you know, maybe it's because they feel like they're going to be judged by their boyfriends. I have no idea. Okay. So let me ask you guys a question. And, and you know, I, I know we're sort of getting into the hypothesis space of the people on the other side of the table. So what do y'all need? Because we're here for you. We're not here for them. I think like for me, it's just like, I want people like to stop like second guessing me or almost like gaslighting me in a sense when like I tell people like I had this terrible interaction with this person and like they said shitty things to me and then them not turn around and be like, oh, was that a joke? And I'm like, I can tell what a joke is. And I've had people try and like um say something that's like sexual in nature and then they try and write it off as a joke when I don't receive it well. And it's like, you didn't mean that as a joke when you said it. And it's like, like they try and like twist it into like, oh, it was just a joke that you didn't get. And it's like, I got that you said that seriously and I'm not stupid. Yeah. So it sounds like what you need people to do is maybe take responsibility for their actions instead yeah. of absolving themselves of responsibility by saying nothing wrong happened. I think too, like there's almost like this expectation sometimes when like I'm in these communities where it's like, I'm supposed to be like really like, um, compassionate and have like a lot of emotional depth and then like the guys are like allowed to be like as deep as a sheet of paper and I'm supposed to be like an encyclopedia and it's like well maybe I'm just a children's book when it comes to that Megan it sounds like you're being frustrated as being judged as an NPC faction with certain attributes well yeah because it's like um when you like when they put all these expectations on you and then like you don't meet them it's like frustrating because like, you feel like you failed but it's mm. like why did i have these expectations to begin with sure like i'm a random ass person on the internet like why do you have all these expectations for me i think we sort of heard that did y'all hear that from sinna earlier too about her kind of trying to live up to expectations and provide people with something and then she kind of hits her limit too so what i'm hearing from megan is that maybe not validation isn't really the right word I guess, what are y'all hearing from Megan in terms of what she needs or what she wants? I guess, too, I could, like, elaborate a little where I feel like I'm put in situations where, like, I'll have, like, these bad interactions with people and then I still have to hang around them because they're still permitted to be in the friend group even though, like, they're an asshole to me, like, all the time. And it's like... Okay. And it, they get away with it because they're not an asshole to, like, other dudes. Like, they're cool with other dudes, but it's just you. So, like, you should just get over it. Okay. So, Megan, I'm going to actually ask you not to elaborate further. And I'm going to ask you, your colleagues, to think a little bit about what do y'all think it is that Megan needs? Decency. Yeah. That, that's it. I think only thing, like, I don't think treating a person just, you know, equally, like, the same way that you treat your homies or treat, like, everybody, you know? Just, like, a normal person. It's like, oh, okay, I cool, you know? Like, I don't need that spotlight. I don't need that sunshine all over me or or anything focused on me, negative, positive. Either way, just treat me like a human being. That's it. Anybody else want to add anything to that? Yeah, I think what I need is, I think I need other, like, I have men in my life who are, I game with, and they're all super respectable. And like, you know, like, when we talk like this, we know it's not all men, and we all have like, guy friends that we like to play games with. Um, when I'm playing games with them, and there is someone who's problematic, they get on my side really quickly and give me support when those moments happen. Hmm. Um, I know some guys are afraid to to do that for fear of like the white knight kind of perspective sure. that gets thrown at them. But it's yeah, nice when it's not just me attacking this alone and it's like somebody else is there to help. Yeah, I think understanding and and being respectful goes a long way. How does... Okay. I was about to ask a question, but I don't think it's a good question right now. Sorry. Let me think. Is it okay if I think for or if anybody else wants to share, please do. Otherwise, I'll digest. Um, I can yeah. share something. Please, Sinestra. 
<laughs> like in some games, like if you talk, like you almost get like idolized if you talk. Like, wow, like there's a girl on my team. Like, it's my objective now to be your friend. Cause like, I like, you know, I, and you don't meet girls that much in video games. So like, I would kind of appreciate it if like people would stop doing that or like stop giving me the expectation of like, oh, like now that you talk, like girls are usually bad at games. Like, let's see how you do. Let's see if you do better. You know what I mean? And then it's like awkward because then I have to live up to like the expectation of like, wow, they think girls are bad at games. Now I have to do really good or like they haven't met that many. I have to like, I have the whole reputation of womankind now on my hands. It's like, you're a representative of the NPC (laughs) faction. Yeah, yeah. I, I hate that. And then it's awkward because they'll be like, oh, like there's another girl in the lobby. Like you're her enemy now. Like why? Like I don't get it. Like I feel like sometimes I'm pitted against other women because they'll be like, oh, well, they're not doing as well as you. You can't be their friend. Like what? <laughs> what, do you, what do you dislike? No, thanks for sharing. What do you dislike about that mantle? What's hard about that? Just, I guess, like all the expectations just like in general i I don't know it's impossible to live up to yeah (laughs) it's interesting right because i'm hearing a lot of degrading behavior and i'm also hearing a lot of idolizing behavior so how can we understand what's the similarity between idolizing someone and degrading them is there one it's not um, looking at I, them for who they are. Yeah. Laz, you were going to say something? Uh, I was going to say it's an exaggeration, too. But, like, both yeah. are exaggerated. That, that's what I'm hearing from y'all, is that, like, ultimately y'all aren't perceived as human. Right? Anything but. That you're not a complex organism with thoughts, feelings, preferences. That just because you're a girl doesn't mean particular things. It doesn't mean anything. It means that maybe you like barbecue and maybe you don't. It means that maybe you like to play this game and maybe you don't. It means that maybe you're good and maybe you suck. And oddly enough, in a bizarre way, what I'm, what I'm hearing from y'all is that in a really, really, and I'm going to say something that's a little bit extreme just for the sake of making a point. I think it's almost like what y'all would appreciate is toxicity if you sucked. Like, if you suck at a game and someone calls you out on it, something tells me that y'all would actually be okay with that. But that you should be judged based on you as opposed to their conception of you. Right? And and it's kind of weird to think about, but, like, if you guys do a good job, it's just you did a good job, not you did a good job in spite of your genitals. Or if if people like you, they like you because you're you, and not because the world is full of simps, that maybe you have inherent value that people can be drawn to outside of your genitals. Shocking. But what I'm hearing from y'all is that's not what happens, and there's a lot of just really bad shit. Like, it it didn't really cross my mind that, like, y'all started, you know, being on the internet when you were 12. Like, that's just terrible. There's no, like, age limitations. Sin, I couldn't tell if you were stretching or raising your hand. I kind of wanted to also say something, because I'm, I'm sure few of us have gone through this experience before, where there's another female in the VC. There's another girl, and because of that, she notices that you're a girl, and she kind of puts you down we're being girl and you're just like wait no we're on the same team why are you dragging me down mm-hmm. and i think that's also one of the things it's just like i'm not like her i'm not like that e-girl you know i'm not like other girls and i think that's also one of the frustrating is just like dude we go through the same shit together why are you also putting me down too you know is that something y'all have experienced? Toxicity from other girls and or women and in, in gaming? Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Get, yeah. You run into the odd person who like really likes attention and yeah, just insecurity. They don't want to lose what they have with the with the guys that they play. Um, and what do they? And have then they non harassment or just attention? Attention. Yeah. 
So there are attention whores out there. There are. Of course. Yes. Does it ma matter what gender it is? Good point. How, how do you... Hmm. So is, is most of the toxicity that you get from other women, you think, relating to attention or other things? Uh, attention other of things status. Too. If they have status within that group of friends or within that community, then they would be incentivized to put down other people so that they can maintain their status and keep you hmm. below them. Yeah, that's what I would call uh, the insecurities, really. Because they don't want to lose it and they're afraid. They, they've got the reputation worth uh, getting exalted for. Hmm. So just to go back to our analogy. <laughs> Have y'all ever done that? Um, I've had some issues where I've had to deal with girls who had been boosted um, by some friends of mine. And then they'd have like these attitudes and then I would be like, and it, like, I didn't know how to deal with them. Cause like, I didn't want to be mean to them, but like at the same time, I'm like, you're objectively bad at this game. And it's like, it's insulting that you're acting like you're good when I know, I know who boosted you and like dealing with that dynamic. Interesting. So like, I, I, I think sometimes maybe I come off like a little rude to some of those girls, but it's like, it's not so much like the girl thing. It's like that they're boosted trash and, I don't like being thought of as on the same level as you, right? Interesting. It's an ego thing. Yeah. That sounds like standard ego, though. Doesn't sound like gender-specific ego. Sounds like you're for a shitty that got boosted, you should know your place. We can all relate to that. Can't we relate to that in a gender-neutral way? Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm curious, though, have y'all ever felt toxic towards either other women or men? Is it okay to ask that question? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Um, I think uh, a long time ago, playing StarCraft II, um, I've potentially been accidentally toxic in certain communities. There were, uh, there were a lot of communities kind of like fighting each other for like status and superiority other, over other groups. Um, and sometimes that created like infighting within the same gaming community that was unnecessary. So, and what did your I've, I've been there before and done it too. Do you mind if I ask you a couple questions about that? Sure. What does that toxicity look like? Um, I think it's like putting people down. Um, I never did it in like a, a gender specific way, but like telling people even if they are like really good compared to me like you suck you shouldn't play like uninstall like that kind of thing <laughs> good stuff yeah that's the, that's the kind of stuff that unites us as gamers <laughs> you know blanket toxicity towards other people for being better at mm -hmm. the game than we are that's what unites us as a community <laughs> i've never i've never understood what you guys have gone through until this moment <laughs> Other people? I'm curious. For me, it's always been like once you meet another girl in the same game or same lobby, whatever it is, it's always testing whether or not you're there for the same reasons. Like, are you also there just to play games? And then we hit it off. Like, you can just, because then it's more supportive. Then it's more just like, yeah, let's just play the game. And if someone is being mean, then we can both handle it together. Um, and when they're not for that, and when they're, you know, more there for the for the attention, then it's like, okay, I'm I'm done. I don't. Hmm. Have yeah. Have any of y'all felt like you were there for the attention, or have there been times in your life where you've appreciated the attention or sold bodily fluids over the internet? No, <laughs> never that. <laughs> no, but I would say like. One nice thing is like it's easy to get like invited to Discord communities and like friend groups as a girl. Like that's one thing I will acknowledge is like it's much easier to like find a group of people to play with as a girl. Hmm. But I think too like there's also like the consequences. Like some of them it's like in these Discords they give you like a weird like role on the Discord, and you don't want that role. But like like what is that mean? queens or like collection or like things like that like. And then it's like all girls in it, and it's like weird. Interesting. 
So what do y'all think about, you know, communities? Like, do you guys find that it's like, okay, hold on. Let me just think about what Megan said. So it sounds like once again, that you're not really being treated as a person, right? So even though there are some benefits, like you get invited, but they're not really inviting you. They're inviting their expectation of you. They're yeah, inviting I find their it, image of you. I find it really hard to know where I stand with like these groups of people. Like, do they actually like like me and want to be my friend, or am I just there because it's like I'm a girl and like they like having girls around? And what do y'all? So when it comes to interacting with other girls who play games, what's that like? So Saleya sort of said. You know, sometimes there may be like a little bit of tension seeking and sometimes they're just there to play games and it kind of, you sort of feel each other out and then sort of get a sense of, okay, how's this going to go? What about other people? I think I try to first engage, like see how it's about, how it goes. Like, yo, what's up? What's poppin'? And then if it goes like, yo, don't talk to me, heck off. And I'm like, okay, I, that kind of hurt me as one to make a female friend, man. And then if it goes great, I'm just like, yo, I made a new friend today. Yo. And I think it just goes either that way. But then sometimes it really hurts me when um, another girl is just like, no, back off. We're not going to be friends. I don't want to talk to you. It's like, you're just another stupid, like, e-girl on the internet. And it's like, you know, it jabs at you. Hmm. Interesting. Any other perspectives on this? I think it like definitely has to do with like I guess the the group of people you're already with because sometimes if you talk to like a group of people in video games, there's not like a lot of girls. So, like after a while, you almost become like their girl, and then another girl comes in, and. Sometimes they'll be like, oh, yeah, I don't really, I don't know, the line I hear a lot from girls is, oh, yeah, I don't really have, I don't really talk to other girls. I don't get along with other girls. It makes me almost feel like, dismissed, like, oh, like, okay, like, I see where we stand now. Like, we're not going to be friends. How do you so, like, understand that? So, like, that's the line I hear a lot. I don't I mean, know. You're saying, so you're saying you hear it a lot, right? So Yeah, what, I do. Because, you know, my instinct would be that people who share an experience can lean on each other for support. But I'm hearing that it's kind of like, you know, 50-50 or maybe even like the odds are against you in terms of interacting with other women who play video games. Is that the case? I'm really just curious what's been... Yeah, I, I think most women like to play, uh, you know, through their experiences kind of isolated um, from others because if they reach out, they get hurt. So they've learned not to reach out. I think so, I've seen that experience happen a lot uh, through the course of my lifetime. Interesting. Hmm. So I have um, any any thoughts or questions, just anything that we've left out or people want to ask or are curious about other people in the group. Y'all are welcome to you know ask each other questions too. If not, I have a couple of other thoughts or questions mm -hmm. and maybe... I kind of want to mention about this because I guess I, I never felt this way for like a long time. I guess like ever since there was like the, the women server in the Discord specifically here for Healthy Gamer and everything. Because like I, I've tried to make more female friends because I, I want to expand my group, not just only just guys, but also girls and everybody in the club, mm -hmm. you know. And I guess one of the things I, I just wish there was more communities like the ones that we have over here where there are so many girls who are just supportive and just being there for each other and just like, hey, I'll listen to your problems. I, I know what it feels like I, I can I can empathize with how you feel. And I, I just kind of wish there was more groups like that online. Yeah, it took me a long time to even find a group like that. I'm, I think I'm lucky to even have a group like that. So l let me just be a little bit transparent. So uh, do y'all think that the the sort of women's space on our Discord server is a good thing? Yes. yes. I think so, yeah. Like I said, I was lucky that I already had a group before this. 
So where we just share uh, experiences, but also just rant when something uh, uh, has happened or, you know, how we feel. And it is it, it it just helps to just know that you have a backup where you can just put those feelings out and you can be supported, supportive in, instead of uh, being dismissed about it. And that's why I think that Discord it was a very good idea because it brings okay. more people together. I think too, like I've spent a lot of time in like the main Discord and the sad thing is, is like there has been cases where girls have come and they tried to talk about, say things like their relationships and the guys there have been less than sympathetic to say the least in, in some cases. So I think like that's why I like the women's Discord because like it gives them the opportunity to talk about those things there. I have some thoughts and I'm just trying to figure out how much to say. So let me start with this. There's a big behind the scenes process about a lot of the stuff that people don't see. And, um, you know, just as a community, if I can just share some thoughts, I'd love to get like y'all's reflections on this. So I, I kind of mentioned this a, a, some time ago that in a sense, I think that the women's space on Discord is sort of a bad idea because I think it's sort of a band-aid for a problem that like is kind of you know, that's not actually the solution that I want. What I want is for that to no longer be needed. Right? That like that that you guys like what we're hearing is that you, what what I'm hearing from you y'all overwhelmingly is that you want to just be treated as humans. You don't want to be dehumanized. You don't want to be treated as a manic pixie. You don't want to be treated as an emotional you know bucket for people to relate to. You don't want to be treated as a sex object. You don't want to be treated as the solution to anyone's problems. You want to, be, you want to just be treated like the shitty-ass gamer that you are, just like the rest of us, right? We're all scrubs yeah. and we all suck, and that's how you all want to be treated. Fair. And, and that's, what I, that's what I envision, is, is that's really what I want our, our Discord to be, is a place where like, we can all just be like flawed humans who are good at some things and bad at other things. And so that's kind of the first thought. The second thought is that I've, uh, so I'm not allowed in the women's discord. Okay. And, and so I really don't know what goes on there, but it's really happy. I'm really happy to hear from you guys that you find it to be like a useful place. Um, and at the same time, you know, we do deal with a lot of toxicity. And so sometimes we get, you know, we ban people from our server who basically do some of the stuff that y'all are talking about. So they start to become uh, emotionally pressuring. Thankfully, I, I mean, I haven't heard about anything that is super severe in terms of, you know, doxing people or death threats or anything like that. Maybe that stuff goes on because thankfully we've got a, a pretty good team of mods who like sort of takes care of things. Um, but, you know, I, I do sort of know that people are emotionally needy or and that sometimes they put pressure on other members. And it's not just women, by the way. Right, so a lot of people like kind of get burnt out from like trying to support other people on our Discord. Um, and then I've also heard of of you know potentially like toxicity or stuff from women on our Discord and also towards other women. And I'm curious if you guys have experienced that or is that something that not yet. Cool. Yeah, not yet. <laughs> okay. Great. I'm happy to hear that. Um yeah, that's cool. So you know, I, I want to kind of, any, any other thoughts? I'm glad you brought up uh, the Discord and stuff, by the way, Sina. Yeah. I think most of us can agree on this. It it was, I guess when, when the server opened up and everything, and I was posting my selfie, I was like, oh my god, there's no weird DMs! Oh my gosh! And I was just like, wait, this should be normal, right? And, oh, we call it, it was just... It felt so nice, like, for everyone else to post their selfies and not just be creeped out by other people. And they know that, like, you know, their selfie is going to be okay. Nothing bad is going to happen after that, you know? Wow, that's crazy. Bizarre I, world. Yeah, I'm actually very surprised. Are you sure it actually got uploaded? Yes. Because <laughs> yes. I'm, I'm genuine. Like, I know we try to foster a pretty positive community, but... Even that sounds like I'm a little bit skeptical. You know, I put faith in our Discord community before and been burned. So, you know, it's not that I don't love them. It's just that 
you know, let's not. So can I tell you all a story? Yes. Okay. So there was uh, one time there was a monk who was sitting by the edge of a, a river. And um, there was a scorpion who like fell into the river. So the monk pulls out the scorpion and gets stung in the process. And then he like drops it on the, on the bank. And then a few minutes later, scorpion falls back into the river. And then the monk pulls it out again and he gets stung again. And then a few minutes later, scorpion like you know, falls into the river again. The monk pulls it out and gets, gets stung a third time. And then one of his disciples is kind of there and he's like, Master, like, why on earth do you keep on pulling the scorpion out of the river? Because it keeps stinging you. And the master says, it's my nature to pull... It's, it's the scorpion's nature to sting people that pick it up and it's my nature to pull drowning things out of the water. So it's going to keep happening. <laughs> what do you all think about that? I don't know if that story made a whole lot of sense, but yeah, it sounded like a pair of pair of behaviors that became cyclical, right? Yeah, and I I think you know sometimes I wonder a little bit because what I'm hearing from Cinna is that someone pulled a scorpion out of the water and they didn't get stuck because <laughs> we expect a certain response, right? Like there's a cycle of behavior. If you post something about yourself, people are going to slide into your DMs, try to buy your urine. You know? I think too, maybe like an I issue think it's there too much is like, for um... Laz. maybe I should stop at that one. She <laughs> Every is... time I hear that. <laughs> I, I can't stop. <laughs> I, I, I'm basically saying it for her benefit at this point. Anyway, sorry. Was that offensive? I don't know. No, no, you're fine. It's just like cringe. Yeah, <laughs> it's cringy. I'm I feel sorry, like it's were... so absurd. It's almost funny, but yeah. almost. It's I mean, that's thing. what we do, right? Is we we laugh when there's nothing else we can do because the rest of the feelings are too painful. Navi, you were saying something. Oh, I don't think so. No, okay, <laughs> I was laughing. Yeah. So <laughs> let me ask y'all, um, kind of one more question, and that's like. What can I do? What can we do? What do y'all, I sort of asked you earlier, like, you know, what do y'all need? And, and I'm kind of just really curious, like, what do you want from other people? What do you want from us? What do you want from me? Like, what would help? Like, how do we fix this? It's a really good question. I don't know how we fix this. Um... That's why we'll start with the earlier ones. That's my, that's my question, honestly. And that's the one I'm going to try to solve but, or answer. But what do y'all want? What can I do? What can we do? What can people who are watching do? I guess for me, like, I just want people to, like, maybe think a little more about, like, what they say to other people. And, like, I guess, too, like, why do you feel so entitled to, like, make these statements to me? Like, the weird, like, sex statements or, like, stuff like that. So you want people to think before they speak. Big ask, Megan. I'll order. Big ask. I kind of would like people to stop giving me pet names if I don't know them. That's very helpful. Uh, uh, additionally, I would like it if, like, if somebody's, like, talking to me in the game, I don't need somebody to, like, step in and be like, oh, don't talk to her. She gets this enough. You know what I mean? Like, I don't need that either. You know what I mean? I just want to be, like, a normal human. Like, you want to ask how my day is like i'll answer that in game like that's fine but like i don't need like the whole game to be like all about me if i like talk once like if i don't mind hmm. like one question you know like i just want to be normal <laughs> okay yeah so so let me ask y'all this question because i'm hearing like slightly different things so i think it's probably all the same but on the one hand you know navi said earlier that it's nice when people within the game are supportive <laughs> and I'm also hearing that sometimes it's annoying when people sort of speak for you. And can y'all help us understand, you know, like, what's the balance there? Like, so what would you, you know, if, if someone calls you a bitch in a game, if there are other people around, what would you want them to say or not say? Rather, rather than, like, leave her alone call out the behavior and, and what they're saying, like call them out and put the attention on them for oh. their behavior instead of putting it on Beautiful. like, leave her alone. Don't say that to her. Like put it back on him. Hey, 
Yep. That's an awful thing to say. Hey, cut that out, idiot. Like, stop. <laughs> that's very helpful. Does that make, yeah. would y'all agree with that? Yeah. Because th th that I think really clarified it me, for me because Sinestro was kind of saying like, it's not about me. Like, that's the whole point is call out the behavior. Don't make it about the victim. And it's because that too is like, you know, treating you like the victim faction. Mm -hmm. And then white knights, charge! Other thoughts about, you know, what, what can we do as a community or what can we do as Healthy Gamer if y'all have specific advice for what I can do as a human besides keep my children away from the internet? I think, I think there's like a good trend for cancel culture and for people to just like, oh, cancel the person, get them out of here. They're not allowed to be part of human society anymore type of deal. And I think... It's just like, why not just call, like, I wish it could just change from being a cancel culture mindset to just being like, call out instead. You know? And help, help me understand, or if, if y'all agree with that, um, help, help us on it. Yes, Alea, what, what? Well, yeah, I, I definitely agree with there because it's not about canceling the other person. You don't solve the problem with that. It's just... Oh, if we get rid of that one person, then it will be fine. No, there's thousands of them. <laughs> so how do, why... we, how do we fix that? The, well, it always that question always feels very daunting to me because it's Damn, about right? the mindset. <laughs> it's about a mindset and being respectful. And that is sometimes too big of a task. <laughs> I think I don't have any helpful suggestions for... Okay. Building more respect in the gaming community for each other, not even just for women, but yeah, like, I don't know if that helps sum it up. Yeah. So um, I'm, yeah, go for it last. Uh, I'm going to agree with everyone that, um, like, uh, what everyone said, like other people should do. I would say what you can do as a as healthy gamer is just talk about this more. Like, we should be having this discussion a bit more often. Um, and I think, like, from both sides, I think it's very helpful that we're here today. Um, I don't know Who's... if you're interested in... Yeah, sorry, go ahead. I don't, I, don't know. I don't know if you're interested in, like, the other side, I guess, like, the, like the boys that have this behavior side. Um, talk, talk about it. Um, but the only like i can't figure out what i should be doing to to make this situation better like maybe you can do something maybe the behavior can start changing but like what i don't know what i should be doing differently to either avoid being hurt or like try to stop this from happening Yeah, I think it's a tall order to put on y'all, right? So I, I think it's it's hard to get the minority to change the majority. So I, I think this is sort of like, you know, if you think about slavery in the United States, like slavery ends when the majority starts to support the minority because when there's a power dynamic, it's really hard for the weaker population to do something. Um, and... I guess it's interesting to hear you guys kind of say that, in a sense, you're not a fan of cancel culture. Um, so let me ask you all, so would you guys want to hear from the other side? Yeah. I think that would be helpful. Yeah. I think what's frustrating to me about, like, this behavior, too, is, like, a lot of these times, like, these guys aren't, like, terrible people. So it's, like, I don't get why they think it's okay to, like, do this stuff because I've, I'll meet them and, like, we'll be friends and then, like, they engage in this behavior and it's like, what's wrong with you? Like you're perfectly fine. And then. Yeah. So that's weird. Right. Because I think that there's like, there's a certain perception or potential toxicity in giving. Oh man, this is such a mess. Okay. But let's think, <laughs> let's dig into it. Okay. So like, like it's, it's kind of interesting because sometimes when people say there are two sides to every story that actually like, further disempowers the victims. Does that make sense to y'all? 
Yeah, I could see that. So like, like if we kind of think about, you know, victims of sexual harassment and assault or, you know, harassment, and we kind of think about, you know, listening to the other side. And I'm not saying that that's the extreme that we're talking about, right? So like, I think that my biggest complaint is that the two incels that we've got gotten on here aren't real incels. (laughs) And maybe that's kind of interesting because when you actually look underneath the shell of an incel, you find a real human. Shocking. And that's sort of what I'm hearing from y'all is that, that there's a lot of toxic behavior. That doesn't mean that the person is evil. That there are good people swimming underneath the bad people. Right? Or at least we hope so. Yeah. yeah I had an idea of something we could maybe do in the Discord. Um, sure. We could have a place for women to post written uh, stories of some of their treatment online which people can read about or read and then like maybe that gives them some more perspective because i feel like a a, like hearing people's stories and like hearing about like stuff that happened to them is like powerful and i think maybe like that would give them insight and uh, so that and i think too um i've heard people mention that the reason they don't like there being only a women's space is like they want to hear like about these stories and like they want to hear about this stuff and hear women's issues and like they don't get to hear it because we put it all in the women's discord so like that would give them an opportunity to see it. Yeah. I, I, that makes a lot of sense to me. I was like very, very loath to segregate people. And I still don't know if that was the right choice or not. Um, but it's not like the women can only participate in the women's discord. Right. So at the end of the day, we just wanted to offer a space. I think it's a really interesting idea to post your stories. And I would say that that is a scary idea. Except for this whole selfie thing, which is maybe giving me a little bit of faith that those will be received in the right way. And if I'm hearing you guys correctly, would you also want to hear stories from the other perspective? Of- Definitely. Yeah. Um, some way you can make it safer is you just have them submit them to someone, in the, like a moderator, and they post them anonymously. And then that sure. way it, it's not linked to individuals in the Discord. I, I get you, Megan. So I think that you know there are a lot of logistics there that we can consider. Um, and I appreciate, it sounds like you've been thinking about this and I appreciate that thoughtfulness. Sorry, I just thought of this now. <laughs> oh, no, no, it sounds like it's thoughtful. Um, so that's kind of interesting. So let me, I mean, it's really bizarre to, to hear this from y'all, but let me just make sure that I'm hearing it correctly. That like, if we got, if we took, let's say like half a dozen people who've been banned from our Discord and, you know, like put them on, you know, heard their stories in some way or had a stream with them was would that be something that y'all would be interested in actually hearing i don't know if that'd be helpful because okay. i've i've met some people who've had moder like they've either had mutes or stuff in the discord uh-huh. and a lot of them just think like they don't deserve the mute yeah. and like they don't acknowledge anything that they've done and i don't i don't think they're the most introspective people okay so practically like what are y'all like because that's that's the other side when I hear when I hear your side at the polar end of the spectrum is the other side. So that's what we're kind of struggling with as an organization, right? So like what, you know, then what do y'all want? Y'all want just the just the low level ones, the ones that are like 50% simp, 50% toxic? I think it's worth the try. I maybe it happens, maybe it doesn't happen, maybe it's too much, maybe it's not, but I, for me, I I would want, I would want to see that. I think that's a really good point. Like, what's the worst that can happen if they do come on stream and they tell their story in that face? There's a lot of bad stuff that could probably happen, actually. The worst that could happen is that we get banned and Healthy Gamer ends. (laughs) Right? (laughs) That's pretty bad. So, it It, doesn't mean that we're not willing to entertain the possibility. Yeah, right. you might need a, a greater filter than just the people who've been banned. Probably. Sure. So. Yeah. <laughs> Laz, you want to say something? Okay. No, no. I just I agree. Yeah. So it's it's fascinating. I mean, so like I think this is I, I'm really happy. In a sense, I'm really happy to hear this, despite the fact that it's scary and p- potentially will tank us as an organization. But on the one hand, I just want to say like I'm I'm I really commend y'all for you know being so I. It's really actually awesome what y'all are saying. And, and let me tell you why I respect it so much. Because 
it, it's it's a very hard thing to be on the like the short end of the stick and to be like treated like shit by a group of people and still want to say we want to like hear your story and understand what your perspective is not to say that you're all are being apologists because i think this is the other big problem is that you know there's like there are people with the pitchforks and then on the other side are the apologists and and i think that most of us are in the middle but what i'm hearing from y'all is that maybe grabbing the pitchfork is not the best thing to do um and and maybe trying to understand what's going on is a good idea can i share just one or two personal thoughts about it which maybe are a little bit controversial mm -hmm. so here's what my biggest concern is with cancel culture is like when you grab the pitchforks and you say that this person is evil this is going to sound really weird um but i think that something subtle happens which is like it becomes a them and us and then what happens is like when someone is a complete piece of shit what happens is that they're like all the low level toxicity people who look at the high level toxicity people and they say they're over there and we're over here and then suddenly like i think that they don't think that they could do the same thing and maybe because i think at the end of the day because they know like they're decent human beings and what i'm hearing from you guys is like most people it sounds like when you actually get a chance to talk to them even the people who are toxic to you or maybe decent human beings maybe most is too much but at least some of them and and i what really worries me is that like i think about my own life and i think about how i was well on the road to becoming like a woman hating incel and like that was me like i was 19 and never had a girlfriend that asked a bunch of women out and then like one of my buddies like got into the pickup artist scene and was telling me about how to get laid and all this kind of stuff and and i think like you know in my life somewhere along the way there was a branch point and i don't know i mean i think i'm a decent human being unclear um but it, you know i think at some point like people have a choice and and i think what's dangerous but is that that you know i think that those people i've been asking like this weird sort of ethical question which is like when does someone become like an asshole or you know like someone who's like toxic towards women like when does that like is it one day and not the next day and and how do you change someone's trajectory because I'm with y'all that that you know just getting rid of the worst cancer it doesn't address the systemic toxicity. And so then the question is like how do you address the systemic toxicity? I think you have to have a systemic solution. You can't just keep on canceling the worst people, which I'm not saying you shouldn't cancel the worst people. By all means do that. I think people should be held accountable to their actions and if, you know, they get canceled, they get canceled. That's fine. And sometimes actually it's it's bizarre that everyone's kind of talking about cancel culture and like some people should really be talking about criminal charges um and and so i mean that's just my thought but it's not my place to say what should or shouldn't happen and and i think what i'm hearing from y'all is that you know maybe and i i would like to hear from some of these people because i think it's important to understand like where your beliefs come from and it's also like i'm glad that some of y'all said you know sometimes i haven't been the nicest person because come on i mean all of y'all have probably been assholes at some point in your life yeah. Um, and that that's, you know, just because you're a woman doesn't mean that you can't act like an ass, you know, and, and maybe people will find that offensive, but I think that's what unites us as gamers is that at some point in time, we're all toxic assholes and that's just what it means. And maybe one day, like that's the bar that's too high for me to solve because that's part of who we are. And I think it's been really awesome for you guys to be able to take a step back from your personal hurt and and be willing to listen to like another perspective because i don't i wouldn't blame you if you didn't feel that way right because when we get hurt like oftentimes it's completely justifiable for us to not have compassion or curiosity about who's on the other side of the table like i wouldn't blame you for a minute you all said fuck them all you know i don't want to hear what they have to say i i honestly i wouldn't blame you and i think it's a real testament to your own self-reflection your capacity for compassion mercy, curiosity, and your desire to make the world a better place instead of just like punish people who have hurt you. Because those are two very different things. And oftentimes we just default towards let's punish the good and that's how the world becomes a better place. It's a very, very dangerous assumption that punishing the good will fix the world. And it's one that a lot of people make. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying it's like, it's an assumption. Those are my thoughts. Any reflections on that? Want to tell me how I'm a dumbass? Now's your chance. 
uh, didn't hear anything I really disagree with. So well, I'll try. I'll try better next time. <laughs> <laughs> Any last thoughts or questions before we kind of wrap up for the day? Do y'all feel like we're in a good spot to wrap up? Or I mean, if we've left something un unsaid or not talked about, I'd I'd love to hear. I can't think of anything. Okay. So anybody want to share their Discord IDs for people to friend you after stream? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> um, so at the end of uh, our sessions, we usually uh, you know, teach some kind of meditation, and somehow that's pertinent to um, the discussion. Are you all interested in learning some meditation or doing some meditation as a group? Sure. Now yes. I have to try to figure out how to make this pertinent. Because in all of my, you know, years of studying in India, they never told me what meditation is good for women who deal with toxicity in gaming. How strange. It's very bizarre. Because it's such a common topic, you'd think that Linda would have talked about it at some point. Yeah. Um, okay, so... Can I have a second to think about it? Mm-hmm. I think I'm going to have to do something on the fly. Let me just try to make it good instead of bad. Okay, so what I'm kind of leaning towards, this could completely tank. So apologies if it does, because like I said, no one ever taught me how to do this. Um, so what I'm actually leaning towards is doing something like a mind-body sort of oriented meditation, which is a little bit more exploratory. So what I'd like to ask y'all to do is to think about some of these moments that y'all have experienced and then sort of in an open way, it's going to be kind of awkward and it'll take some time for us to kind of find our rhythm. But what I would love for is if y'all could all sit up straight and close your eyes and then I'm going to ask you guys certain questions and then I want y'all to feel completely fine just sharing something, whatever you feel with, and I'm going to ask you a lot of stuff that's related to your physical sensations. And so I'll ask you to recall things and I'll ask you like, what does that feel like in your body? And then I don't know where we're going to go from there. Um, okay, so sit up straight and y'all can do this at home too. And what we're going to be listening for is something about the stories that you share or the physical sensations that you have and whether other people within this group or people who are watching have felt similar things. So close your eyes and sit up straight. We're going to start by taking three breaths. So deep breath in and out. In and out. In. And out. And we're going to start by just feeling our body in its current state. Just acknowledge that we've been talking for a little while now. And that the attention, emotions, humor, concentration, all of those things have had their effect on our body. You may feel this like a little bit of fatigue, a little bit of sense of being spent. I'll invite the group to just share any sensations they notice in their body. My jaw is tight. Soleil nodded. Anyone yeah, same. Noticing. Been that for a while. Okay. Tension. My, my feet and my the top of my head, or I can feel them more. Okay. And so think a little bit about, you know, what are the feelings or things that we've talked about that evoke tightness within your jaw frustration so 
So what does frustration feel like in your body? Like tightening everything together to hold everything in. Yep. And so now I want you guys to think about the experiences that you all have had, which lead to you being frustrated. Try to pick one. And remember the way that you had to tighten up. You had to restrain. You had to hold that energy in. You couldn't be loose. You couldn't be relaxed. Laz, what are you experiencing right now? Um, I remembered something that um, was uh, more physical. Um, OK. So you remembered something that was more physical. And that, I'm just going to make a couple of assumptions, and we're going to talk through that for a moment, OK? Sometimes when things happen to you that are physical, they create a mental response. And that's where everyone else can jump in, right? So you've had certain things that happen to you that create a mental response. And then that mental response then triggers your body in particular ways. Do you guys see that chain of mind to body? And whether, it be, whether it's being called an attention whore or being told that you can't send people emojis, Right? That moment where you say, I'm not going to use emojis anymore. What did you feel in your body? That moment where someone called you out as an attention whore. What did you feel? When people started talking shit about you behind your back. And then I want you to feel those sensations now. And if you feel like sharing them, I'll be quiet for about... 30 to 60 seconds and let you feel and share if you feel comfortable. I feel a little hollow in my chest. I feel tired. I feel so exhausted. I just want to be okay. My skin is kind of like crawling and tight, all of my exterior. Mm -hmm. My stomach hurts. So now I want you to listen to the other people who are speaking and notice how you feel about them. What is it like hearing people feel hollow and that their skin is crawling and that their stomach is hurting? How do you feel towards them? I want to give them a hug. Yeah. Right. And there's compassion. And also, I want you to take a moment to try to acknowledge sadness. Towards yourself and what you've been through. And that things have happened to you that make you feel this way, that you feel exhausted and hollow, tired, that things are a chore. Now what we're going to try to do is teach you how to give yourself a hug. So I want you to notice that physical sensation and find it in your body and really just notice it. Try to take a snapshot. And now what I want you to do is take a deep breath in and push your stomach out as you breathe in. And then as you breathe out, pull your stomach back in. So with an inhalation, your stomach expands. And with an exhalation, your stomach contracts.
one more time. And now add your chest. The stomach expands, the chest expands. And then everything relaxes. Breathe in, expand, and relax. Now slowly, slowly continue. And notice what's happening to your skin, your stomach, the pit in your stomach, the hollowness in your chest. Let it be there and also let it out. Let go of it. Shake it up a little bit and let whatever is in there, let it come out. Don't force it. If it wants to stay, let it stay. It deserves to be there. But also as you have compassion for yourself, recognize that you don't have to hold on to it. Not that you blame yourself, that you may not be ready to let it go completely, but that you don't have to hold on to it the way that you have been. that you couldn't be yourself. You haven't been able to be yourself. People have put expectations on you, burdens on you, pressures on you. And then if you have the space for it, hope a little bit. Because we live in a world where there's at least one Discord server where you can upload a selfie. Right? And acknowledge that there's a part of you that's not going to want to hope. That says that it's not going to be enough and that this will continue forever. And acknowledge that that part ain't wrong. Because you all started when you were 12 or 13. And who knows how many years that's been. And that it sounds like you've been hurt time and again. And so hurt has a space. It deserves to be there with you. And also, you can let it go just in a tiny bit. And now return to your breath. Feel the breath go into the parts of your body that hurt. And then let the breath come out. Let yourself relax. Let yourself process and let yourself let go. When you're ready, come back to the group. Come back to Navi and Laz and Sinestra and Salea, and Megan, and Seth. How do y'all feel? What was that better? better? anybody not feel better you're allowed to not feel better i just feel tired yeah me too you know it's interesting because we think about letting go as stopping to exert energy but letting go is exhausting also i don't know what the fuck that was but people were responding very very differently Hopefully it was helpful. Any last thoughts, questions, or reflections before we wrap up for the day? Do you all need time to process what we just experienced? Because we can do that if you want, or we could just... 
I'm okay. Thank you for having us. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. <laughs> All right. We'll take care. And um, thank you. Thank you for being so honest much. and compassionate and sharing your point of view. And I hope that, you know, the world be a slightly less toxic place because y'all have come on today. Hope so. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Weird, huh? Ooh. Not exactly what's going on there, but seemed to be good. Uh, okay. So um let's think a little bit about yeah thoughts reflections questions from y'all thinking about it what'd y'all think is that helpful is that a good stream Man, easy, huh? It's so weird, man. Dude, dudes on the internet are so weird. I don't understand them at all. I really don't. Very confusing. Um, yeah. Yeah, you know, so someone's asking, it sucks to know just how bad the community is for so many people makes me want to tackle the issue head on, but what to do? I mean, I'd say that like you can, right? So like, don't over white knight it. So I thought that was a really important distinction. Um, don't over white knight it. But like, if you see someone being an asshole in a game of yours, just be like, hey man, like, do you have to be an asshole? Like not trying to be an asshole myself, but like, can you be like, you know, if you're having a rough day, that's cool. If you're frustrated by the game, that's cool too. If you want to be mad at someone, that's fine. But like, do you have to be so mean? Can you be a little bit less mean? And just call people out for it, right? Or if someone is mean to someone else in a game, like be like, hey, you know, like you can, you know, so I just think a little bit about Dota. So, you know, sometimes, you know, if I'm, especially like if I'm winning a game of Dota, like at the end, people will be like, yeah, this guy's complete trash. Like this guy on my team is complete trash. And I'm the guy who's winning the game, right? So at that point, I'm like, hey, like the dude's just like played the best that he could. Sometimes we all have bad games. Like I crushed at this game, but sometimes I'm the trash in the game. Can we just like maybe let people slide because they don't always have the best game? And I, I think the issue, I don't know if you guys kind of got this, but like the issue is that like every game, there are chances of people being assholes. And so what you can do is just like not be an asshole or call it out or try to be nice someone to, in game. And what if like the games that we played had a chance of having like an, a genuinely like good and supportive person in the game? Like, what if that happened to every game? You guys just think about the games that you play and how many people tend to be like understanding and supportive of each other when they do a bad job. Very few, but you could be that person. And how many people does it take to turn the tide? I'm not sure. But I think that... It, each and every one of us as gamers has responsibilities to be like, try to be a decent person when you are having a b bad day or when people are playing a bad game, or even if you're toxic. Try. I know this sounds really, really bizarre, but over the course of the game, maybe you can apologize. Maybe you can say, hey guys, I'm sorry. Like I just got super frustrated and tilted. I didn't mean to take it out on y'all. It's crazy. Crazy. Just try to be nice to people and play who playing video games. Okay. Anyway. So on Wednesday we have um Casey Tron. And then on Friday we have Michael Reeves. Um, you know, we really appreciate all y'all's support. And it's really great that uh y'all are um, 
when is soda popping coming? I don't know, man. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and, and raid Anita. Thank you all for coming.